This mini PC is my home server. To give you an idea of how mini this is, it's maybe about three to four times the height of a cell phone. And the surface area of the top of this is actually smaller than my cell phone. This is not some mega desktop. You don't need a server rack for it. You can just throw this on your desk or in a closet. And if you're like me and you don't need any peripherals attached, you just put ethernet in and power and you're good to go. This video is about what led to me buying one of these. I'm not trying to sell you anything. There aren't even affiliate links in the description. I just want to share my journey. The journey started with a light bulb. In December of 2013, I purchased a starter kit of these. They're controllable via Wi-Fi, so I can change the color of them and I can turn them on and off from my phone. This was 2013, so this was novel. It was super cool and I had a blast just changing the colors of my lights. However, sometimes you walk into a room and you don't have your phone on you and you don't want to walk all the way over to a lamp in order to turn them on. That's what led to me buying a Raspberry Pi. I took this video from 2014, you can see it's grainy footage, but it shows a button connected to a breadboard and when you press the button, it would randomize the color of the lights. So problem solved, right? Well, in theory, yes, but in practice, we weren't going to put that monstrosity on the wall. So we just stuck to using the app to control the lights. But something I didn't mention is that the phone doesn't directly communicate with the lights. It's actually communicating with this bridge and the bridge talks to the lights. And in order to know that your phone is able to do that, you need to physically press a button on the bridge. So when we had friends or guests over, they would need to download an app and then they would need to press this button. And I thought the whole thing was just too unwieldy. I had the lights, I had the Pi, I might as well write a website for the Pi and our friends' phones could talk to that and then it could talk to the bridge. And so that worked great, but you might be wondering, well, don't they still need a URL to access the Pi's site? And they did, but we just had an NFC tag so that when they entered the house or when they were about to go to sleep, we put this on an end table and they could just tap it to their phone and it would show the site with controls for the lights. Anyway, this video was supposed to be about how I got to the mini PC. Well, the Raspberry Pi was the first home server that I had, and it got me thinking, why do people even use home servers? Why do they want them? And I think there are two reasons that rise above the rest. There's network attached storage, which is having some number of hard drives accessible to any device on your network. People use this for backing up files, photos, videos. And then there's media servers like Plex. This is like having your own personal Netflix. You can cast videos or movies to a phone or a TV on your network. And so what I wanna add into the mix here is non-critical production services. Right now I have three things running on my mini PC. I have bots for Twitch and Discord, they can respond to commands. I have that same command database exposed over a website that's running on there. And I have a service to sync my notes. And so these are things where if they went offline, it might be a bit of a pain, but it's not gonna cost me hundreds or thousands of dollars in lost revenue. And so what you would typically consider for hosting, if not for a mini PC or a home server on your network would be the cloud. And so I wanna compare the pros and cons of hosting on a mini PC versus the cloud. The biggest pro of hosting on a mini PC in my mind is the cost. The one that I showed costs $150 plus tax for 16 gigabytes of RAM, four cores, and 500 gigabyte SSD. And so just as a frame of reference, I took the DigitalOcean pricing page for droplets. And if we were to compare, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and I have four cores, and they don't have that particular combo right here, but both of these are already at about $50 to $100 per month. So that's pretty expensive, but you might say, well, you're not using all of that mini PC right now, right? And that's true. If we look at BTOP, I'm at nearly 0% CPU usage. I've used about a gigabyte of RAM. And after 40 days, I've used 11 gigabytes of bandwidth. So if we compare to one of these lower rows, let's say this one, this is $12 a month. So after a year, you would have paid $144. We're getting pretty close to the price of that mini PC already. Now there are some caveats here. I'm not counting the cost of internet because for me, I don't need to pay more just by having another PC on my network, but I do have to pay more in electricity. I could not find exact figures. And even if I could, you might pay a different amount per kilowatt hour than I do, but it seems like I'm paying about one to $2 per month in electricity. So generally the cost is pretty low, which is why I think it's one of the biggest benefits of hosting on a mini PC. But there are a couple other pros I wanna cover. For one, it's just a device that you own, so you can do anything with it. You could upgrade its hardware, you can run a Bitcoin miner on it, you don't really have any restrictions there. And also, it's just a computer. So anything you can do on a computer, you could also do on this mini PC. You don't have all the moving parts of a cloud platform or different paradigms that you need to learn. So those are the pros of hosting on a mini PC. What are the cons? The biggest source of these cons comes from the fact that you'd be hosting this from your own home. So for example, if your internet or electricity goes out, then your service would go offline. If you've been hosting on a cloud platform, they would typically have a service level agreement, which promises some amount of uptime, 99.99%, which means that if your service is offline for more than some number of hours per year, that you get a credit back on your monthly bill. 
We typically don't have those same assurances with our home internet or electricity, which is why I say this is for non-critical services. If you can't handle your service being offline for hours per week or month, then it means it was a critical service and you should consider something else for hosting it. Likewise, when it comes to scalability, you're buying one of these machines or maybe two or four, but unless you buy a data center's worth of machines, you're not going to be able to scale up as much as you could possibly ever need. And you'll need to start considering something else when you hit those limits. When it comes to bandwidth, I myself don't have limits on the bandwidth, but I do on the speed. I have gigabit internet. If I want more than that, I need to pay my ISP more, which is fine. But then I also need to start upgrading my hardware. I need better ethernet cables, a better switch, and even the mini PC I bought can only handle gigabit. So those are the other kinds of scalability you need to consider when it comes to this. Finally, with latency, your home is going to be close to some people and far from other people, and you're still at the mercy of the speed of light. So the people who are close to you will have low latency, and if it's an unpalatable amount of latency for the people who are far away, again, you just need to consider something else. Finally, you're managing everything. If you want a load balancer, if you want a firewall, you need to come up with solutions for those things. One last quick thing, and it ties into that final point, is that you don't have to just use a mini PC or just use the cloud. You can mix the two if you want to. You can have your mini PC be a worker that your cloud load balancer balances to. And if it happens to go offline, it's just taken out of that pool and your service itself doesn't go offline. The two last things I want to cover here are pretty quick. One is that the mini PC is just a computer. It's not necessarily a server. You could plug a keyboard and a couple of monitors and a mouse into the computer that I have and use it just like a desktop machine. The other thing that I want to say is when it comes to hosting public services, you don't need to expose your public IP address. Cloudflare Tunnel is a free service that exists out there, and I'm pointing a.bot.land at Cloudflare, which then tunnels it to my computer. So you're not directly contacting my computer when you do that, but it is still running the service on my mini PC. All right, summing up this whole video. So I talked about lights and that somehow got us to a mini PC. I'm happy with the mini PC. I like it. I would recommend it. But what I really want to focus on is the motivation of this. I got these lights just because I was interested in the lights. And then look at what that led to over the course of the last decade. I find that fascinating about development that some purchase, device, hobby, anything like that can lead to you occupying your time and just solving problems, whether or not they're necessary problems. So I just wanted to share this journey. I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much for watching.